Hello ladies and gentlemen, Jordan here for another Arc Theory video, part two of my color theory video, but I'm doing things a little bit differently. You'll notice in the last video that I did on color theory, everything was animated and it was weird. And honestly, uh, it, it was a lot of hard work and it turned out okay, but I think that everybody would agree that doing things a little bit more casually is best for everybody. So I'm going to get you the information that you want and get you on your way. Now, uh, if you haven't heard, there's this new augmented reality game to be released sometime this year. They said early 2016. Obviously, that's not going to happen. But uh, Pokemon Go is being uh, worked on by the, the company Niantic Labs, which used to be a part of Google. Now they're their own company, and they make AR games. So their last game, uh, their biggest game, claim to fame, was the game Ingress. And uh, Ingress is very popular. And as far as augmented reality games, it's hard to really beat the concept behind uh, Ingress. And so we used that in the last video as an example of how color theory does, in fact, play a role in uh, how we play augmented reality games. And, and it definitely, the, the proof really stood. Uh, it's really hard to, to disagree with the evidence that colors do affect uh, the way that we work and the way that we play a lot of games, but specifically in this case, Ingress, and I think on a broader scale, augmented reality games. So if you question the validity of anything that I'm going to say here in a second, uh, go back and watch that if you can sit through it. Um, it definitely will make you feel a little bit better about everything that I'm saying. It's not coming out of my butt. It is actually researched and peer-reviewed and published scientifically, so it is, it is definitely uh, valid. So, in Pokemon Go, what we know, we don't know everything yet, but what we do know is that there are three teams. And those three teams are the red team, the blue team, and the yellow team. Now, I did a little bit of research into Faber Buren's color theory on these three particular colors, and I have to admit, um, it's a pretty wide gambit of, of things that are associated with each of these colors. And uh, we did color. We did cover. We did cover blue in the last episode, so you guys know a little bit about blue and, and its color associations right now. But red and yellow, uh, those two, I'm gonna have to go over because I really didn't have a reason to touch them in the last episode. So to briefly go over the blue team, blue is associated with uh, trust and strategic thinking and focus and a lot of other wonderful things. And because of that, it is, it, is the, it is the favorite color of almost half of the population. So, and nothing is really even close to blue. Nothing is anywhere comparable to, to what blue is in society. So uh, I think part of the reasoning for that is all the positive emotions and associations we make with the color blue. So it's easy to just pick that as a favorite color because why on earth do you need favorite colors anyway? Uh, but that is that is kind of one that people go to. It's just the the default, I guess. So that makes sense, you know. Uh, but that does mean that if people start picking teams based completely on favorite color, then blue is going to be very beefed up. When I first started doing the research, I thought that red would be kind of close, but it wasn't. It's just red is just so far behind blue that you know. Uh, if we were picking just on favorite colors, I think that red would have a hard, hard time. But because there are a few more factors here, and I'll explain some of that in a little bit based on some of the statistics that we have, uh, I think that red will be a little bit beefier, but uh, we'll get into some of those color associations as well. So what kind of gameplay will the blue team play? Blue team is probably going to want to play, or it was probably going to play, not wanting to play, uh, strategically. Um, they're going to sit down and figure out what CP they need to put on a certain a certain gym, trying to balance the gym out a little bit and, and try to train it up the best that they can and uh, try to use just the, the right mixture of Pokemon. So and because we know that typing is a thing in this in this new game, uh, we've learned that from the beta, then we have to really pay attention. You know, blue team's gonna be really paying attention to those kind of things like typing and everything, trying to um, find the, the perfect balance of, you know, water, fire, grass, ground, all that kind of thing. 
uh, figuring out what most people have, you know, running the strategy basically. Uh, and that's going to be them. They're also going to be the most populated team. Um, rough estimate, probably put them in the upper 30%, um, like 38 or 39. And that's not outrageous. I'm, I'm just trying to be realistic here because I'm not going to say that they're like 56%. You know, that, that would be bigger than, you know, both teams combined. And that's just ridiculous. I, I'm not going to go that far. But, you know, 38 or 39%, that's still being pretty pretty big that's and then that's being generous but uh but that's kind of the idea of of how blue is going to play they're going to be the biggest team and they're going to know it and they're going to be strategic and they're going to win a lot of things so be prepared for that also um the red team let's talk about the red team real quick red team is probably going to make up a, a pretty decent portion um the second largest team in, in here it, and it is uh probably going to be about if if any of these charts hold up any kind of scientific value at all then i'm going to assume that red is going to be somewhere in the the uh 30 33 32 percentile range and uh probably more than that actually if i'm if i'm being honest maybe about 35 percent and um and so they're going to be the second largest team. They'll be they'll give Blue a run for their money. But um, what we know from color associations and, and Faber Buren's color associations are that red is associated with speed and courage and fear and aggression. So all of those things tell me that they're going to just be the go-getters. You know, they're going to see something. They're going to go want to take it down. They're going to just get a group together, be spontaneous, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, they are going to be a force to be reckoned with if they get their mind set on something. And uh, I think that that's, that's probably a fair estimate. Now, of course, there's always going to be exceptions to that. Um, keep in mind that most of these color associations are just generalities. These are not, like, every single time this is how the teams are going to be. So the red team is probably going to be very aggressive. Um, they're going to be quick. They're going to be... Um, precise and uh it's kind of barbaric i don't know how else to describe it but that's just the best term that i can think of to come up with it because if when you have courage and fear and rage and speed all thrown into one it's just what i think of so um all these color associations combined would show us that red is is going to be a team that will really uh dominate at certain tasks which means that they may do really well at live events i don't know what the, the setup of the live events are going to be yet so uh, there's really no way to know uh, how they're going to do, but if this mentality persists and, and all they really have to do is, is go out and catch Pokemon and get points and catch gems, things like that, they're going to do great. So that's good. Now let's talk about let's talk about the elephant in the room, and that's the yellow team. And it doesn't matter how you cut this, the yellow team is going to be the smallest team. It could be anywhere from like, and I'd hate to say it, but like 20% to, to uh, maybe like 20%. 5%, you know, it's it's the smallest team by far. Uh, and I think that there's a few reasons for that. One, uh, yellow is, according to Faber Buren's research, the third least favorite color, generally speaking. Um, that is behind brown and orange. So if that doesn't tell you that people are not necessarily going to just jump out of the way to pick yellow, I don't know what does. Also, some of the color associations of yellow are uh, things that are cheap or inexpensive, uh, things that are cowardice, um, maybe things that are uh, shallow, things like that, or, or superficial. Um, so uh, that that doesn't really help yellow's cause much. Now, the one thing about yellow that really could help help them gain their numbers is that yellow is associated with fun, which, interestingly enough, is how they ended up putting it into the, uh, the logo, the original Pokemon logo, um, back in the anime, that Pokemon logo had a, a yellow fill for the text because at the time, marketing researchers were finding that yellow was associated with fun and kids, they wanted it to associate with kids with fun and things like that. So, um, all that to say, because these are the three main colors of the entire franchise, these were the only three colors I really could have picked, honestly, but, um, Yellow is going to be the smallest team by far. 
Um, now, if you want to pick yellow, that's actually not a, not a bad choice because um, they have done a little bit to fix this. But you'll notice that in these kind of games, you know, if you're if there are a lot of blue team players and you're a blue team player, you're you're a small fish in a big pond. And by that I mean, it doesn't matter how hard you work, there's going to be bigger fish in the sea, okay? You're never going to be the creme de la creme in your team. It's just not going to happen. And you're also going to have a hard time probably getting points. You're not going to be able to, you know, uh, go out and just capture a gym because most of your teammates will have already captured them. Or, uh, and, and your team may have that same problem, but the other thing is that you'll never really get an opportunity to be a gym leader because uh, blue is always going to... Somebody on your team is always going to trump you. Uh, yellow team, because they have less players, they may have more availability to be more gym leaders and, and raise their stats a little bit, um, to trade within each other, to, to trade amongst teams, things like that. Um, so it's still going to be a struggle for the yellow team, though. They are still going to be the underdogs, period. No way around it. And I hate to admit it, but the, the Faber Buren has spoken. Uh, also, the fact that you know the the first two big games in the in the Pokemon franchise were blue and red in the U.S. Uh, yellow didn't come along until later. So if we're picking just based on the games that people picked, then yellow's gonna be picked less often anyway. So it doesn't matter how you cut it, yellow's gonna be the smallest team. But that does provide them a couple of opportunities. Although uh, I feel like Niantic's trying to balance things out so that uh, the least populated team uh, doesn't get too overpowered so that's a good and a bad thing for the yellow team but all that to say that's kind of the breakdown of of the teams based on Faber Buren's color theory uh, now like I said there are exceptions to every rule and these are meant to just be generalities when we looked at Ingress we looked at both of the factions we realized that both of those factions did have a lot of exceptions but at the end of the day the overall stats proved uh, that their color associations did play a role in how they played the game. So that's all I have for you guys. I hope you guys learned something. I hope it helps you when you're picking teams. And uh, and I'm excited for this game to come out because I'm excited to see how things go. And because of the predictions that I've made, I'm interested to see how they play out. Thank you guys so much for watching and good night.